This is the GTN Show, and this week we are asking ourselves, is triathlon trendy? We're seeing more and more athletes coming over to triathlon from the likes of world-class swimming, professional cycling, so we wondered, why exactly is that? Yeah, and we've also got some fairly exciting news about new clothing partnerships. We've got the re-emergence of some very iconic race venues. We've also got all the pictures you have been sending us in to have a look at, and we will not forget to recap all the racing from around the world. Now, a few weeks ago, we spoke about the whole jack of all trades term. Now, this is a term that I guess the purists, the swimmers, the cyclists, and the runners like to give to us triathletes. And as much as it pains me to say it, they tend to deem us as uncool, don't they? Yeah, they do, but I think perhaps those tables are starting to turn ever so slightly. In fact, this weekend, I spotted a post online of ex-professional cyclist, very recently retired actually, Peter Kennick from the Isle of Man, who did his first ever triathlon, sprint distance no less, but he appeared to absolutely love it. Yeah, he actually posted a comment with that, saying, first triathlon done, loved it, the camaraderie, the buzz, so much fun, would highly recommend to anyone wanting some focus in their life, and and some great photos of him running along there. And he's literally retired from pro cycling, what, two months ago? Yeah, barely, and, yeah. And his first event is a triathlon. So yeah, maybe we are getting a bit more respect and maybe triathlon is a bit more trendy than we first thought. Yeah, so why do you think that is? I mean, is it really just the whole challenge aspect, do you think? Yeah, I reckon it is, you know, given, or well, even for an athlete coming from the top of the game, it's still, see it as a challenge, obviously you find it quite tough. And even whether you're an ex-pro or not, I think that's a reason why a lot of people come into triathlon because they almost want to prove to themselves. And I think that's genuinely why we've seen a big spike in participation numbers over the last decade. Yeah, I mean, we've got the likes of Cameron Wirth at the moment absolutely dominating triathlon, haven't we? We've had the likes of Andrew Tolansky move over from pro cycling in the last couple of years. He's done you know, fairly well. Perhaps we could see Marcel Kittel. I mean, he's just retired from professional <laughs> cycling. Who knows? It's a very and, different physique, but... And maybe even Richie Port will just go, you know what, I'm going to go back to my roots and start triathlon again too. Uh, so much speculation there. Yeah, there is. <laughs> um, but no, that's, uh, it's awesome to see these really credible athletes coming over to this sport that I guess was deemed uncool. Um, but another athlete, actually, away from cycling, Jazz Carlin, Commonwealth Games champion, uh, two-time silver medalist um, at the Olympic Games from swimming has just done her first triathlon, Volcano Triathlon, absolutely loved it, found it incredibly tough. Um, but yeah, another awesome athlete to come over to the sport. Which is saying an awful lot because her medals came in the 400 and 800 freestyle, <laughs> which are really, really tough events to, to win at that level. And you know, the mileage that they have to put in training is massive. So for somebody like her to come over and show so much respect for triathlon, I think is, is brilliant. And I suppose it got us thinking long distance triathlon, if we had a pure swimmer or a pure rider or a pure runner, who do you think is gonna come out on top? Uh, that is, yeah, it's a really good question, actually, isn't it? Say like a pro from each of those. You, um, it's a hard one on a long distance triathlon. You could say the bike's the biggest proportion. So yeah, yeah the, the cyclist is going to be the best. So put Peter Kenner on the uh, on the bike, but. Actually, if you can't swim, yeah. that's a lot of way to not yeah. be able to swim for. That's so. a lot of worry. Whereas <laughs> maybe a swimmer can at least, yeah, most people can ride a bike, but then the run tends to be hard for a lot of swimmers. Sort of yeah, the ankles and all that. And, and, yeah, exactly. And I don't think anybody should underestimate quite how far a marathon is. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. A I lot mean, can go wrong over a marathon. <laughs> a lot can definitely go wrong over a marathon. So yeah, I think. Um, it's a tricky one, isn't it? I, yeah, well, we're going to throw this to Paul Fraser, aren't we? So we're going to ask you guys, if you put a pro swimmer, a pro cyclist, or a pro runner in a long distance triathlon, who would be the winner? Yeah, we'd, we simply have it being the swimmer, would we have the cyclist, or would we have the runner? Or let's go for a fourth, none, because you're going to win it. Oh yeah, true. Uh, well, now for last week's poll, we asked you, is the sub two hour marathon possible? Well, you guys were pretty unanimous with your answers in this case because 12% of you said no and a resounding 88% of you thought that yes it is. So what do you think Mark? What's your thoughts? Um, I'm going to go yes. And I'm just waiting for the Nike 8% to come out so then it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we? I mean, he's fairly um, vocal on the fact, Kipchoge that is, rather that he can go 26 seconds quicker than he did two years ago when he attempted it for the Nike breaking two. So he's got a pretty good track record of running marathon. So I think if he backs himself, I'll back him. 
When you're in, Iron Man Penticton is back. It's returning for 2020. Yeah, now this really is pretty exciting. It's not an event I ever did, but I only ever heard really exciting things about it. It's one of the, or was one of the oldest and longest standing events. Um, 1983 it started, and up until 1999 actually, it was the only qualifier for Kona in North America. And just by all accounts was this fantastic event. The whole community got behind it. It was really regarded as a great honest course because it was just a one lap bike course and there's very few of those around. So yeah, just all in all sounded like a really, really super event. Yeah, and from what I understand, unfortunately, the city and Ironman struggled to come to an agreement within their contract. So the city decided, well, basically not to renew that contract. So they lost the Ironman Penticton event. Um, instead, they replaced that with Challenge Penticton, but sadly that never really brought in the same kind of numbers. So then that obviously disappeared. Uh, they replaced Ironman Penticton with Ironman Whistler, but equally that also just didn't quite get the same numbers that I'm Pen Penticton initially had. No, and I suppose what was interesting was um, two years ago the ITU Festival Sport, which we just had in Ponte Vedra last weekend actually, that came into Penticton and really seemed to reignite the love for multi-sport that Penticton had always had and it seems that that's kind of just sparked that revival of getting the event back in the town so fingers crossed from 2020 it's going to be another really exciting event for athletes to get stuck into. Now some new news on the clothing and equipment front because Patrick Lang, the current World Ironman Champion, has signed with Castelli for his apparel for the coming season, which is really interesting news for the Italian clothing brand because they already have a whole host of, well, it's really just a who's who of triathlon um, superstars, isn't it? We've got the likes of Miranda Carfrey, Laura Phillip, Tim O'Donnell, Fred Van Leerd, Andres and Michael Rayler, Cameron Worth. I mean, the list actually goes on and on, so it's probably no surprise he wants to get in on the act. Yeah, and following on from that with the equipment, we have Debar wetsuits, which we spoke about a couple of weeks ago, Jan Frodeno signing with them. Brand new brand, no one really knows much about them other than they've got a very big price tag to those wetsuits. $1,500 yeah, I believe yikes. it is. Uh, well they've also announced, this isn't hot off the press, but thought it's fun to uh, let you guys know. Uh, Daniel Arif has joined those ranks, um, Ben Knut and also Matt Russell. So now unfortunately to end on a sad note because unfortunately last week we had the very sad news of 37 year old Chris Sterling who suddenly passed away and we've had tributes flooding in across the triathlon community here in the UK. Yeah, now Chris was actually top athlete. I've never actually met him unfortunately, but I had always heard of him, seen him on race results and just heard how nice he was. Now he was part of the Kendall Triathlon Club, who's also part of the Ambleside Athletic Club and the Keltman Triathlon Club. Now he has gone on to take eighth at the Norseman. He won the brutal extreme triathlon in Wales and setting the course record. Yeah, and he also in 2017 not just won the Keltman Extreme Triathlon in Scotland, but also won the Canada Man Extreme triathlon too so just an ex exceptionally gifted athlete yeah now if you are by any chance in the Ambleside area this Friday then there will be a memorial service taking place at 2.30 so now it's time for all the photos that you guys have been sending us in. And we've got a really good selection this week, haven't we, Mark? So first up is from David, and he is sending us a swimming picture from Huntsville, Alabama, isn't he? Yeah, Olympic-sized pool, nice 50-meter pool. He said he's filming his catch to send to his coach. Um, so he's taking the still frame from that, so um, just to find out how good his technique is. Yeah. Uh, feels so pro even though he's such a noob, um, but it looks good to me. Yeah, it looks like he's got um, most of that 50 meter swimming pool all to himself, yeah, which is pretty that. lucky. Very, very nice. Um, yep, so next up we've got another very cool um, picture from Patrick who is in San Diego, he's on the ferry. Yeah, he's riding a specialized alley, he's riding the ferry back after a loop of San Diego Bay. And that looks great, yeah, it doesn't does, it? Does. I wish we'd been told about that when we were out in San Diego last month. But yeah, I do like those old specialised alleys as well. There's something nice, I don't know, nostalgic about them because that's mm. when I was sort of getting into triathlon. Yeah, and we know. Everyone used to be riding them. They're cool bikes, they do look good. Um, very nice. Anyway, uh, next one is really cool. This is sent yeah. by Scott. And this is off the back, well, I assume it's off the back of me doing my homemade Discworld video because he literally just sent this in uh, one day ago. Yeah. And um, I have just recently, if you haven't seen it, I've made a Discworld cover it's a good for video. your ordinary wheels. So you can follow the DIY steps and make your own. Um, and Scott has done just that for his son. Cooper, 
Um, this is in Bustleton, Western Australia. This was his first triathlon, so they decided to modify his bike with a custom homemade disc wheel cover, complete with color matching zip logos. And another thing that I really like about that picture is his water bottle placement tucked in under his down tube, which is pretty nifty. For yeah, it's very <laughs> smart, isn't it? Uh, well, next one from Olive, and this is coming in from Bintan, um, Indonesia, an hour, an hour away from Singapore by boat, and they are riding an Airstream, which we don't see too many of. Um, that is an Austrian brand. In yeah. fact, you were just saying that Ronnie Schlimbeck has just He started. is, yeah, so he's not racing on uh, BMC anymore. He's on an Airstream, but you're right, you don't see them very often. Um, this did um, spark my interest because I have actually raced in Bintan a few years ago and it is hotter than the sun out there. So <laughs> I imagine that was a very sweaty bike ride, but it's very stunning. So. Well, he said it was, it, I mean, I'm sure it is hot, but then he said an hour later, it, well, the heavens opened. And more, more, it, warm rain though. <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, but yeah, he managed a nice 115K, which is pretty, Beautiful. pretty tasty. Uh, but this last one, I think oh. this uh, kind of trumps more, doesn't it? Yeah, so this is from um, the purpose-built, in fact, bike track, and I have actually, I'm not dropping names, but I have been on this little bike track once before too, because I have raced in Dubai as well, and they basically laid out this track in the middle of the desert, so it's completely traffic-free, um, which is kind of amazing when you think about it. I cannot remember how long it is. I don't know if it is a full 125k loop, which is how far Volker and his friend Sebastian went. This is Sebastian in the picture, isn't uh, it? This is Sebastian in the picture, yeah. Um, and But they hit 100 125k started at 4.30 in the morning, which I believe is kind of a must at this time of year in the Middle East because you just have to beat the heat. So yeah, yeah cracking Incredible picture. photo, yeah. yeah. So now it's time for our race news. And first up this weekend was the Ironman 70.3 Asia Pacific Championships, which were held in Vietnam. Now on the men's side of racing, we had an extremely strong field, which was headlined by none other than current world champion, Patrick Lange. But the field also included a whole host of other former world champions, including the likes of Craig Alexander, Trenzo Bazzoni, Mauricio Mendez, Tim Don, and even Tim Reed. Now by midway of the bike, we had a large group of all these very, very excellent athletes, including some 15 in total. But by T2, it was actually Tim Reed who had pushed off the front and established a two and a half minute buffer on the rest of the field. But very soon into that run, it was Patrick Langer who was using that heat acclimation training to good stead, who ran through with Australian athlete Tim Van Berkel. And it was actually Tim Reed who held firm for third place, second place going to Tim Van Berkel, and Patrick Langer, the current world champion, taking the win. So moving on to the women's racing, and Holly Lawrence used a very handy 90 second buffer on exiting the water to build a six minute cushion whilst out on the bike. And she did that over a trio of athletes, including Sarah Crowley, Radka Kalfeld, and Amelia Watkinson. Now, although this lead was slightly diminished over the course of the half marathon, this didn't really trouble Holly Lawrence. And she went on to claim first place in this championship event with Sarah Crowley taking second and Radka Kalfeld running at the podium in third. And to make this event win even more special for Holly Lawrence, this was off the back of winning the North American 70.3 Championships just last weekend in St. George, Utah. Now, aside from that championship event in Vietnam, there were a number of lesser, smaller 70.3 events around the globe. And first up was Ironman 70.3 Paisdax in the south of France. And on the women's side of racing, we had a clean sweep of British athletes on the podium, with India Lee, the early swim leader, holding firm on the bike until T2, where she was joined by Emma Pallant, who then used her very superior run speed to surge ahead and secure the victory. Now, although Lee was holding fairly solid in second, Second place, she had a very frustrating number belt infringement penalty, which she had to take stop and go 30 seconds for late in the run, which allowed Nikki Bartlett to edge pass to claim second and Indy Lee therefore taking third. Now on the men's side of racing, Andy Bocherud, the defending champion from Germany, used his very noted bike strength to forge a four plus minute gap over his countryman, Andreas Dreit, and another minute plus, so five minutes in total in T2, back to Adam Bowden from the UK. And we've actually got Adam's race suit there from last season. Now, despite an incredible run split of 1.08 for the half marathon, Adam wasn't quite able to close the gap on Andy Bocherud. So we had Andy Dreit holding on to third place on the podium, we had Adam Bowden taking second and Andy Bocherer was once again the champion in this French race. 
Panama City Beach has long been the host venue for Ironman Florida, but this weekend it played host to the inaugural Gulf Coast Ironman 70.3 event. Now, the very fast and flat course provided a first victory in nearly two years for American athlete TJ Tollison, and he took that ahead of Chilean athlete Philippe van der Vingard, and in third place we had Frenchman Yves Jurich. Now, on the women's side, we had a dominating performance from Australian athlete Kyle Lester, who took 10 minutes over second place, an early swim leader, Lauren Brandon, with American athlete, Lauren Matthews, coming in in third. Well, now it's time for the caption competition. And last week we had a fantastic photo, of South African athlete, Anna Watkinson, almost looking decapitated, didn't she? <laughs> it kind of creeped me out, if I'm honest, but I said that last week. So anyway, we had some great captions coming in, and the first one I could chat to you about is from Alex Churchholt, who says, I thought the neck of this wetsuit was too tight, which, <laughs> see where you're going there. Um, then we had Jason Simpson who said, when you're training so hard, you get decapitated, which is quite, <laughs> quite a good effort, but brilliant, you've yeah. got the winner there. Uh, but the winner, and it seems like you guys like this one because he got a lot of likes, he said, uh, this is from Justin Revelstoke, said, wait, this isn't what you meant when you said sculling. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is yeah, a little bit good, so um, well done. Yeah, well done, you got a swim cap, so do get in touch over Facebook and we'll send it out to you. Uh, but now for this week's caption comp, and this is from the 70.3 in Axon Provence uh, this weekend, and this is Andy Bokra, uh, who is Well, is he, is, he, is he congratulating I don't, I'm not <laughs> sure, but it's Adam Bowden who's come in second to him, so... I think Adam will be... I don't know. <laughs> anyway, you guys send in your captions in the comment section below. Well, that's it for the GTN show this week. We hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you'd like to see more from GTN, just click on the globe and subscribe to the channel. Now, if you haven't actually won yourself a GTN cap so far, having watched numerous GTN shows, then do not worry because you can get hold of these by heading on over to our GTN shop. In fact, we've got some new ones and some nice bright colors you can yep. be seen in the open water. We've got these hoodies, t-shirts, cycling kit, towels, all sorts, so you can hit that shop icon on screen right now to see them. Yeah, and if you want to see the video that Mark's just been chatting about in our show today about how to make homemade disc cover, well, you can find that here. Yeah, if you'd like to see how much the pros get paid and how, in fact, they do get paid, then you can see a video that Fraser and myself did by clicking just down here.